In this tutorial, I'm going to show you six ways to make dates work in Excel. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now let's get started with the first and most versatile example. Here for the data, I've got what look like dates, but they aren't. If I double click it, you can see the single apostrophe in front, which makes this text. And it's the same for this cell and this cell. Down here, I've got a date that's just put into kind of a wacky format. Basically, there's no delimiters between the months, days, and year. And down here, a different set of delimiters as well. So none of these are considered dates as far as Excel is concerned. You verify that by selecting the cell, going to the Home tab, and changing the format to General. And if you do that and you still see what looks like a date, well, it's not actually a date for Excel. So the best way to do this, you want to select all of the data, go to the Data tab, and we are going to use Text to Columns. So click that. Check Delimited up here. Go to Next. Now make sure that you have all of the delimiters unchecked. I know it sounds kind of weird. We just selected Delimited, and then make sure you have no delimiters selected. Then go to Next. And this is the important part. You want to click Date. So down here, click Date. And over here, select the format of the date. So here I've got month first, then day, then year. So we select month, day, year. And this will obviously depend on your location. So if you're in the US, you're gonna have it month, day, year. If you're abroad, you might have it day, month, year. So pay attention to that before you do this. Destination, let's put it in the column next to our column. So I'll change A to B. So the destination, instead of starting in A3 and overriding our data, it's going to go to B3 and put it in the empty column. And now we just click Finish. Now you can see that these down here automatically have converted to a proper date format, or at least what looks like one. And all of these up here, let's go back to the Home tab. You can see now in the number box or area, it says Date. And if we select all of these dates, we go down here and hit General we get the proper Excel date format, which is just the serial number. So that's how we know for sure that it converted it into a proper date for Excel. I'm going to hit Control Z so we have our nice, neat little dates. Now this text to columns is the best way to convert what appear to be dates to actual dates in Excel. So if you don't want to watch any more of the tutorial, just stick with text to columns. The next examples are going to cover kind of outliers where text to columns doesn't work or for one reason or another you don't feel like using text to columns. So before I move on, just remember text to columns, you select the dates, go to the data tab, text to columns, delimited, next, uncheck all of the delimiters, next, select date, select month, day, year, if you're using the US date format or day month year if you're using the European or foreign month format. Then select the first cell where you want the data to go into and hit finish. All right, so let's go to the next example now. Scroll down. Here we're actually going to use text to columns again. So what I have over here is a European date format. So I've got day, month, year. And I want to reverse it so it's month, day, year. In fact, Excel doesn't even recognize this as a date in my version. So what I can do, select the data, data tab, text to columns, delimited, next, uncheck all the delimiters, next, date, and here you want to select the current format of the date. So right now, this is in day, month, year. So I want to go ahead and select day, month, year. Now destination, let's put it in column B. So it'll start in B15. Hit finish. And now I have nice, neat dates formatted correctly. Make sure everything's okay by switching it to general format. Perfect. 
So the only thing I did different there was when we went to text columns on the third window for date, I made sure that I selected day, month, year instead of month, day, year. If you get confused, if you choose the wrong one, don't worry. It's just not going to output a correct date format, so go back and do it again. Now let's move on to some examples that do not involve text to columns. So you have something that won't work with text to columns, or you just don't feel like using text to columns. Text to columns will actually do this one correctly, but this is just an example. So here I've got semicolons that are delimiting the month, day, year, and I want to make sure that it's an actual date. So what we can do, I'm going to copy this to a new range just to show you how it works and keep the original data is we select the values that we want, then we hit Control F. It's going to bring up the Find and Replace window. Go to Replace, and in the Find What box up here, we put a semicolon, because here what I want to do is I want to replace the delimiters that are there, the semicolons, with forward slashes. So I put a semicolon in Find What, and a Replace With is going to be the forward slash. So whatever you have as a delimiter, put it in the first input box. Then we can just go to replace all. Now before hitting replace all, make sure that you have only selected the data that you want to be replaced. Otherwise, it's going to replace everything on the worksheet. If you're worried about that, you can do replace one by one. But replace all, much faster. And then after you do that, it tells you how many replacements it made. And once we make the replacements, Excel automatically has converted these to dates. Once again, go ahead and check that by changing the format to general, and we see the date format. Now, find and replace, super easy. Select the values, hit Control F, go to replace, choose what you want to replace, and replace it with a forward slash. You're good to go. Now, let's go here. This is not as good as using text to columns. In fact, pretty much nothing in this tutorial is, which is why I showed you that first. But you may want to use this. So here I have the same values that I used in the first text to columns example. And here are two functions that you can use to change these values into actual dates. However, they don't work so well. So here equals value. Let's copy it down. This is the proper date format. So when you do this, it's going to output the serial number, and then you may have to format the cell on its own. So I can see these came over correctly. This one did not. This one definitely did not. So the value is not specific to dates, which is why it worked on this number. Or it looks like it worked, but it didn't actually pop out a date. In fact, if I change this to a date, you will see it's February 11th. 5054. <laughs> so yeah, that's wrong. Now we could also use date value, which is value but made for dates. You can see this one also doesn't work on the bottom two, but at least it provides an error for this one, whereas the value function doesn't. So if you do want to use a function like value or date value, definitely use date value. Basically, it's just going to convert what looks like a date into a date, but it's not even close to as good as text to columns because text to columns got both of these values down here and date value did not. The last thing would be to select all of the data, go to the Home tab, and format it as a date. So I'm showing you these examples so that you know about them, but in most situations, I wouldn't recommend using them. So date value function and value function. Now let's go on to the next example. One of the really good functions to use for dates in Excel is the date function. The date function allows you to feed it the pieces of the date, and it will actually create the full and proper date for you. So here I've got month, day, and year. And each one of the pieces of the date should be a number in this case. So equals date. And it tells you the arguments, very simple, year, month, day. So we select the year, comma, the month, 
oops, the month, comma, and the day. Close parentheses, hit enter. Easy peasy. So the date function is going to allow you to combine pieces of the date to make a proper actual date for Excel. And once again, we can test it by formatting this in the general format, and we're going to get the date serial number there. So now we know it works. Let's undo that. The date function, it's super simple, but it really is the backbone of many formulas and functions that you're going to use when dealing with dates. So let's skip to the next example. We have the date function. Now we have some dates with text. So here we can't actually use the date function. So let's say that we use the date function over here. I'm going to build it from scratch again, equals date. And we did it like we just did. So year, then month, which is easy for us to understand, right? January, and then day. It does not work. So the date function cannot read January. You need to have some numbers in here. So this involves one extra step. We need to get the number for the month. And for that, I'm going to make an intermediary column here for month number, and then I'll combine it in a moment. But this will make it a little bit easier to understand. So let's get the number for the month. What we want to do, I'm going to start inside to out, because this is a small formula, is we want to do the date value. So here, it is actually helpful. Then we want to click January. So click the cell with the month as text. Then do an ampersand or the and sign and one. Close parentheses. Now that's going to get us almost what we want. But we don't want a full date. So if I hit enter, it's going to give me a full date. Let's format it as a date. January 1st, 2018. So what happened is I put a one after the January and I fed it into the date value function. And since I didn't feed it a year, it automatically used the current year. So it basically just got January 1, 2018, and it turned it into an actual date format that we can use as a date. Now that we have the actual date format, it's super easy to get the month from it. We just use the month function and the month is going to take a date format and get the proper month value for it. So 1 to 12. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and change the format from a date to general. So 1 is represented as January 1st, 1900, if you change it to a date format. So now we have month 1. And you can see that this will work even if the month is the three-letter representation of the month. Now what we do is for our date function for the month, we simply select this right here. Copy it down, and that allows us to make a date from all the little different parts when your month is originally in text. Now if you're pretty comfortable with formulas and functions, and it's not going to confuse a coworker that you may send this to, you can go ahead and just put this formula, I'll leave this column in here in the example workbook, but you could go ahead and just put it in here instead of this reference. So you'll have a bit of a bigger function, longer. It's going to be a lot more confusing for people who don't know anything about dates, but it makes everything a bit more compact. And now you may have a date that's kind of like this. It has text, but it may be January 15, 2018, all in one cell. And you will need to break it up into multiple cells here in order to get it to the point where you can combine it to make a proper date. Sometimes that happens. Honestly, text to columns will usually fix that problem for you in many cases. However, if it doesn't, I'm going to cover that in the next example. So the main thing to remember here is how to get a month from text to its number equivalent. And it is simply this formula. The month function around the date value function. All right, let's go to the next and last example. This one's actually a bonus example. And that's because you could use text to columns on this. It would work nice and simple. It's going to make life so easy. Back, delimited, good, 
good dates. So even though I had these little squiggles, little tilde, on the either side of the year, it didn't matter. It still converted it to a proper date. Even though January is spelled as a word instead of a number, it still did it in the correct format for dates. But you already knew that. Let's go ahead and split these values up into separate cells and go from there. And that's the point of this bonus one, is to show you how to do these things a little bit more manually than just text to columns. So we can select the data. And actually, I am going to use text to columns here for one part of it, just not the way that I just showed you. So we go to Data tab, Text to Columns, Delimited, Next. Now I actually selected Delimiter. Here I want to split each part of the date up into its own cell. So I'm going to check next to Space. That's what separates the month, day, and year. You can see down here that it's correctly separated. Then go to Next, select where you want the data to be placed. I'm going to start it in column B. Hit Finish. Now we've got the three parts of the date, which kind of brings us almost back to this part. But you've got one little issue. You have this stupid little squiggle on the side of the year. Now, as long as every cell is formatted the same, you can get rid of this very, very simple. You use the mid function. It's one of the text manipulation functions. It's a great, simple to use function. Mid, select the text that you want to do something with. Now start number. This is the first point in the cell where I want to start pulling text in. So I don't want to get the first character. That's a bad one. So let's start at character number two. So that's my start number, comma. Now how many characters do I want to pull in? Well, the year is only four characters long, so I want to pull in four characters. Close parentheses, hit Enter, and copy it down. And if you want to learn how to separate all the values out here into separate cells using text manipulation functions, Definitely check out some of the other tutorials that I've done. They explain that and are very helpful because text manipulation gets very complicated very quickly and is beyond this tutorial. So that's it. Six examples for how to make dates work in Excel plus one kind of funky bonus example at the end. And I guess the main thing that I'd say is always start with using text to columns. It's by far the best way to get your dates to work in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.